government expands subsidized diesel control system project. Qatar visit vital to help Malaysia understand Gaza's situation. Salam Malaysia Madani from all of us here. Happy Mother's Day. You're watching Malaysia Tonight. I'm Jessica Lee. The Ministry of Domestic Trade and Cost of Living is expanding Phase 2 of the Subsidised Diesel Control System or SKTS 2.0 project to another 14 types of commercial vehicles. Minister Dato Armiza Muhammad Ali said the increase would take the total number of commercial vehicles eligible for subsidised diesel to 23 types. Dato Armizan said applications can be made through the My Subsidy Diesel system starting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Kita bersandarkan kepada engagement dengan kementerian-kementerian terlibat, khususnya kementerian pengangkutan dan juga industri. Kerajaan juga telah bersetuju supaya SKDS 2.0 ini ditambah lagi, diperluaskan lagi bukan hanya kepada sembilan jenis pengangkutan barangan pada fasa satu tetapi tambahan lagi kepada empat belas jenis pengangkutan barangan. He also said companies applying for the subsidy must be registered for business in Malaysia with the vehicle having valid and up-to-date road tax and being eligible under the system. At a meeting between Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim and his Qatari counterpart, Sheikh Mohammed Abdurrahman Al Thani, on Monday, is expected to provide the best platform for Malaysia to understand the current situation in Gaza, which is reportedly deteriorating due to the ongoing atrocities of the Zionist regime. Malaysian Ambassador to Qatar Zamshari Shaharan said that Malaysia views Qatar's role as highly significant in the conflict, considering the West Asian nation is a key person in the negotiations between Israel and Hamas. He also noted that this meeting could be seen as an opportunity for Malaysia to join Qatar in channeling aid to Gaza. Qatar sendiri menyediakan average, bermaksud average. Average ni maksudnya mengadakan uh, apa, channel ataupun bantuan itu secara langsung dari Doha ke Al Arish. Uh, mereka punya base di Al Arish untuk menyalur atau untuk menyelaras bantuan-bantuan kemanusiaan mereka. Dan dalam uh, perbincangan saya dengan pegawai-pegawai uh, uh, kanan di sini, mereka bersedia untuk uh, membantu Malaysia bersama-sama untuk menyalurkan uh, bantuan kemanusiaan tersebut. Datuk Sri Anwar will embark on a three-day official visit to the country at the invitation of the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim Hamad Al Thani, and participate in the Qatar Economy Forum 2024. Now, the Health Ministry, by the coming week, will address the issues concerning the AstraZeneca vaccine, according to its Deputy Minister, Dato Luka Nisman Awang Sauni. Now, he said the data concerning adverse side effects will be explained, as well as the issues and announcements made by AstraZeneca. Tetapi uh, sekiranya ada kesan sampingan uh, on this uh, penerima vaksin, uh, memang fasilitis KKM akan bersedia untuk uh, menerima dan juga uh, kajian dilakukan berkenaan tentang perkara tersebut. So just wait for KKM to announce uh, something on this uh, matter. Okay. He said this to reporters after the International Nurses' Day celebration 2024 in Putrajaya today. Dato Luka Nisman said there were reported cases of adverse side effects on vaccinations, but not specifically on AstraZeneca only. The nursing ceremony today was attended by 1,200 nurses from the private and public sectors, and the theme was Our Nurses, Our Future, the Economic Power of Care. Meanwhile, when asked about hiring foreign nurses in the country, Dato Lukanisman said that since last year, foreign nurses have been hired and the hiring window is expected to be until October 
this year. Bukanlah satu jumlah yang besar kerana KKM meletakkan very stringent ataupun tata cara yang ketat untuk pengamalan kerana kita tidak ingin mendapatkan bekalan nurse yang tidak berkualiti. So di peringkat KKM kita akan pantau berkenaan tentang hal ini dengan teliti lah. The Ministry Nursing Director Devi K Saravana Mutu, who was also present, said that so far 101 foreign nurses have been hired, although only in the private sector. Now, these nurses, she said, are coming from India, Sri Lanka, the Philippines, and Indonesia, and undergo stringent screening. Now, a total of 401 projects to upgrade clinics and strengthen healthcare facilities nationwide are in progress this year with an estimated cost of 150 million ringgit. Health Minister Datuk Sri Dr Zulkifli Ahmad said in Sabah alone, 55 of these projects are underway and expected to be completed by the end of the year. Dan kalau kita ambil di seluruh dan kita berbelanja di negeri Sabah untuk tahun 2023 sebanyak RM10.8 juta dan untuk komitmen tahun ini ya kita punya 20 kita telah memperuntukkan sebanyak 21.5.5 juta. Itu komitmen untuk menangani klinik-klinik TAF tahun ini yang berbagi 55 klinik TAF lagi. Iya, sedang sedang dalam ya, dalam kita kita dalam pembinaan untuk kita deliver before the end of the year. He added four more clinics are slated for completion this year. He said the ministry aims to complete them before the end of the year as there will be no rolled over to 2025. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Fadila Yusof has described the victory of the Pakatan Harapan or PH candidate in the Kuala Kububaru state by election yesterday as proof of the close cooperation among the component parties and the stability of the unity government. He said Pakatan Harapan or PH must now work hard to provide the best service to the people. As the voters have already made their choice, he said whoever is elected must fulfil their responsibilities to the best of their ability so that the ruling coalition can do the best for the people. Apart from that, he also said the unity government will continue to focus on economic development and efforts to assist the people in various aspects. Dan bagaimana kita nak menstrukturkan semula supaya kita mempunyai kemampanan dari segi kewangan. Dengan kemampanan itu kita dapat fokus membangunkan negara kita dari segi projek dan juga fokus kepada bantuan uh, terus kepada rakyat. He said this to reporters after attending a charity golf tournament organised by the Council of Datu Datu Malaysia in Bukit Kiara today. The four cornered contest saw PH candidate from DAP Pang Sok Tao securing victory with a 3,869 vote majority over three other candidates. Teen discipline issues are among the top three challenges faced by mothers today, followed by children's education and family expenses. Women, Family and Community Development Minister Dr. Sri Nancy Shukri stated that these challenges were identified through the fifth Malaysian Population and Family Study conducted by the National Population and Family Development Board. Datuk Sri Nancy also revealed that the findings of the Malaysian Family Wellbeing Index showed a decline in the scores for the Family Quality Time Indicator and the Work Family Balance Indicator in 2022 compared to 2019. She explained that working mothers spend much of their time dealing with demanding daily routines, needing to wake up early to attend to their children and family, working an average of 8 to 10 hours a day, returning home late late afternoon or early evening and continuing their duties as a wife and mother at home. Namun begitu, kita harus sedar bahawa tanggungjawab dalam membesarkan anak dan mengurus rumah bukanlah semata-mata tugas seorang ibu saja. Oleh itu adalah penting bagi para suami untuk memahami dan menghargai sumbangan isteri mereka serta turut berkongsi tanggungjawab dalam mengurus rumah tangga dan anak-anak.
in our business segment, rise in wholesale and retail trade reflects dynamic economy. Malaysia's wholesale and retail trade increased by 5.2% in March this year, indicating that the domestic economic ecosystem of the country is in a dynamic and progressive state. Minister of Domestic Trade and Cost of Living, Dato Armiza Muhammad Ali, stated that the rise also proves that the ministry is on the right track. Elaborating further on the matter, Datuk Armizan said the increase in the percentage of wholesale and retail sales performance signifies that all of the actions, monitoring and enforcement conducted by the ministry are on the right track. He said the ministry is not only enforcing existing laws and regulations, but also other initiatives that are sparking a positive response from the market. Now, last Thursday, the Department of Statistics Malaysia, or DOSM, stated that wholesale and retail trade increased by 5.2% to 145.7 billion ringgit in March this year compared to the same period last year. Chief Statistician Dato Sri Dr. Mama Uzir Mahidin stated in a press release that the increase is a result of the retail trade sector's hike of 7.1% or 4.2 billion ringgit to 62.8 billion ringgit. Now, the Johor Singapore Special Economic Zone, or JSSEZ, is likely to be developed in Iskandar, Malaysia, and Pengarang, covering an area of 3,505 square kilometres. Menteri Besar Datuk On Hafiz Ghazi said it involves the local authorities of Johor Bahru, Iskandar Putri, Kulai, Pasir Gudang, and Kota Tinggi. He said a total of 16 economic sectors have been proposed, including electrical and electronics, medical and pharmaceutical, aviation, speciality chemicals, logistics, healthcare and education. Seperti yang saya sebut tadi, apa saja keputusan ataupun cadangan yang dibuat oleh kerajaan negeri, niat kita sentiasa adalah untuk rakyat dan bangsa Johor. Itu niat kita. Menaik taraf hidup mereka, memastikan mereka tidak ketinggalan di dalam arus pembangunan tersebut. However, these matters, he said, are still under discussion and will only be finalised once all feedback and views have been thoroughly considered. He said this when addressing questions regarding the status of the JSSEZ project at the Johor State Assembly sitting today. Now, earlier this year, a memorandum of understanding on JSSEZ was signed between Malaysia and Singapore. A total of 268 electric vehicle or EV charging stations have been operational, bringing the total number of EV charging bays to 2,288 units as of March this year. Investment, Trade and Industry Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafro Tengku Abdul Aziz said that while the goal of 10,000 new charging stations remains unchanged, the target for direct current fast charges has been increased from 1,000 to 1,500 stations. He said in the first quarter of this year, the country's EV market has continued its rapid development with nearly 11,000 units of battery electric vehicles and hybrids sold until March. Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul said that during the National EV Steering Committee meeting chaired by Datuk Sri Fadila Yusof, there was also a discussion revolving around the EV battery passport concept. He noted that the meeting concluded that all EV batteries must be equipped with identification to facilitate tracing and recycling at the end of their life cycle, aligning with the principles of the circular economy. He added the government will collectively propel the development of the country's EV industry and ecosystem in a progressive manner. 
Now, Bursa Malaysia is expected to trade range-bound while taking a breather following recent gains in line with global equities. The FBM KLCI broke the key 1,600 mark on Tuesday, sustaining its rally and reaching a two-year high. Rakuten Trades in Drenberhad Equity Research Vice President Tong Pak Leng said the FBM KLCI long-term outlook remains positive, driven by strong corporate earnings, cheap valuations and substantial support from foreign investors. While Rakuten Trade anticipates a temporary pause in bullish activity after such a strong surge, the index remains positioned above all exponential moving averages. Now, Tong said the upward trajectories of the 20-day and 50-day exponential moving averages indicate that the KLCI is consolidating with a positive bias, adding that the index is anticipated to fluctuate within the 1,600 and 1,620 range next week. In the meantime, Bursa Malaysia breached 2 trillion ringgit in market capitalization on the 7th of May for the first time and continued to ascend before edging lower on the 9th. Of May. On the regional front, Malaysia is the only country that attracted sustained foreign net buy from the 6th to the 8th of May. On a Friday to Friday basis, the FBM KLCI increased 11.08 points to 1,600.67 from last week's 1,589.59. Now, the crude palm oil or CPO futures contract on Bursa Malaysia derivatives is expected to trade sideways with a bearish bias due to rising output and lower demand. Now, palm oil trader David Ng said weaker demand is expected after the post-festival season that ended this week. He said the prices next week could trade between 3,750 ringgit a ton and 3,950 ringgit a ton. Meanwhile, interbank group of companies senior palm oil trader Jim Tay said CPO futures are expected to trade between 3,600 ringgit a ton and 3,800 ringgit a ton. He added there are still a lot of stocks in Malaysia and Indonesia with demand from China, India, Pakistan and West Asia countries. On a weekly basis, the spot month contract for May dropped 37 ringgit to 3,853 ringgit a ton. June fell 27 ringgit to 3,843 ringgit a ton. And July slipped 35 ringgit to 3,809 ringgit a ton. The total weekly volume surged to 314,352 lots from 219,172 lots in the previous week, while open interest fell to 220,693 contracts from 230,394 contracts a week ago. The physical CPO price for May South fell 20 ringgit to 3,910 ringgit a ton from 3,930 ringgit a ton in the previous week. Now, the local rubber market is expected to be range-bound next week with an uptrend-based tendency as there will be sporadic stock replenishment activities to maintain the rubber prices. Industry expert Dennis Lowe said the improving weather conditions in the future and in the ending of the winter season may prompt an improving supply situation. He noted that the yo-yo oil prices and the volatile US dollar may also impact the prices and demand. Now, such acute volatility represents uncertainties and may warrant caution and fear at the same time. Meanwhile, another dealer said the commodity prices would continue to track the performance of regional rubber futures markets, the strength of the ringgit against the US dollar and the benchmark crude oil prices. She said the market would be supported by lingering concerns over natural rubber disruption due to unfavourable weather conditions in major producing countries in the near term. She added traders will continue to monitor further cues on the outlook of the United States interest rates and more stimulus measures from China while cautiously keeping a watch on the ongoing geopolitical conflict in West Asia. 
Let's take a look at gold. Gold futures contract on Bursa Malaysia derivatives is expected to see profit taking next week. With prices seen to move between $2,360 and $2,400 per troy ounce. SBI Asset Management Managing Director Stephen Innes said as the US dollar lost ground on Friday, gold is increasingly viewed as insurance rather than speculation. He said that while no asset moves upward in a straight line, he anticipates some profit-taking early next week. He added that, however, with the US dollar weakening due to softer economic data, the demand for gold is likely to increase. Now, this could mark the beginning of a more significant trend, especially if the deteriorating U.S. economic outlook gains momentum. Now, looking ahead to next week, Ines foresees gold prices ranging between $2,360 and $2,400 per troy ounce. Now, during this trading week, the domestic gold futures traded mostly higher, tracking the COMEX gold futures and also following the weaker-than-expected United States non-farm payrolls data release recently. The volume of gold futures in the local market increased to 72 lots from 51 lots in the previous week, while open interest jumped to 106 contracts from 22 contracts a week earlier. Now, Asia's first cylindrical floating production, storage and offloading or FPSO facility, High Kui No. 1, departed from Qingdao of East China's Shandong province today. The facility, an offshore oil and gas processing project capable of crude oil production, storage and export, has become the mainstream production facility for global offshore oil and gas development. Designed and built by China, Haikui No. 1 marks a breakthrough in the nation's deep water, ultra-large offshore oil and gas equipment development. Since the FPSO facility itself cannot sail on sea by itself, it was loaded on a semi-submersible ship at Jiaozhou Bay. Then, after three days of welding, it will be delivered to Liuhua oil field in the Pearl River Mouth Basin for operation. After arriving at Liuhua oil field, Hai Kui No. 1 will be pulled by 12 mooring lines, which are all 2,570 metres long, and float and operate in the sea at a depth of 324 metres. Consisting of nearly 600,000 parts, High Queen No. 1 weighs some 37,000 tons with a height of about 30 storeys. With a maximum displacement of 100,000 tons and storage capacity of 60,000 tons of oil, the facility is capable of operating continuously for 15 years at sea. Coming up in our foreign segment, Canada arrests fourth man for the murder of Sikh leader. A fourth Indian national was charged by Canadian authorities in the 2023 killing of a separatist Sikh leader in Vancouver. Amandeep Singh, aged 22, was already being held for unrelated gun charges before being charged with first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder in the slaying of Hardeep Singh Nijar. Three other Indian nationals were arrested this month. The killing sparked a diplomatic row between Ottawa and New Delhi when Prime Minister Justin Trudeau linked Indian intelligence to the killing. Nijar, who emigrated to Canada in 1997 and became a citizen in 2015, had advocated for a separate Sikh state known as Khalistan, carved out of India. He had been wanted by Indian authorities for alleged terrorism and conspiracy to commit murder, allegations that he denied. He was shot dead on the 18th of June last year by masked assailants in the parking lot of the Sikh temple he led in suburban Vancouver. Now, the World Bank is providing emergency support to Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil, which has been severely affected by recent rains and floods, with the death toll from historic floods reaching at least 136. 
The World Bank said approximately $125 million in resources from ongoing projects are available for immediate reallocation. It said the funds from the project's Urban Resilience Programme in southern Brazil, Revitalization Programme for the central area of Porto Alegre and Support Programme for the new Bolsa Familia. The World Bank also said that it stands in solidarity with the population of the state of Rio Grande do Sul affected by the recent disaster. The bank said it has extensive experience in crisis management and reconstruction linked to natural disasters in several countries around the world. And it is bringing this knowledge to bear on the state's rapid recovery. It is also ready to work together with the competent authorities to prevent further future disasters like this from causing so much personal and material damage. Next up in sports, Azizul Hasni continues to show progress in Japan Track Cup. Malaysian track cycling ace Dato Muhammad Azizul Hasni Awang has continued to show progress ahead of the 2024 Paris Olympics by winning the bronze medal in the men's sprint event at the Japan Track Cup held at the Izu Velodrome in Shizuoka. The 2017 world champion and 2020 Tokyo Olympics silver medal winner in the Kirin event and who has targeted the gold in Paris, however, had to be satisfied with the bronze medal after losing out to two riders from the host country. The race was won by Kaya Ota, who lived up to his top billing as the 2022 Hangzhou Asian Games gold medal winner, while fellow countryman Yuta Obara took the silver. This is the first competitive overseas competition for Dato Muhammad Azizul Hasni since the 36-year-old The Pocket Rocket Man won a bronze medal at the 2024 Australian National Championships in March. Japan Track Cup is among competitions lined up for Dato Muhammad Azizul Hasni, Muhammad Shah Firdaw Sarum and Nurul Iza Izati Muhammad Azri as preparations for the Paris Olympics. Now, undefeated Al Hilal won a record extending 19th Saudi Pro League title with a 4 1 victory over Al Hazim to reclaim the trophy from Al Itihad, who won it last season. Jorge Jesus' side hold a 12 point advantage over Cristiano Ronaldo's Al Nasser in second with three matches remaining. Alexander Mitrovic gave Al Hilal the lead from the penalty spot after 15 minutes, but Faiz Selimani netted the equaliser for Al Hazim in the 34th minute. However, Jesus' side took the lead again with an own goal from Ahmed Al Juwaid in the 39th minute. Mitrovic then scored his second goal in the first half stoppage time, with Sergei Milikovic Savic adding another three minutes later to make it 4 1. Al Hilal are chasing a treble, having already clinched the Saudi Super Cup title in April and reached the Saudi's Kings Cup final, where they will play Al Nasser. And that's it for Malaysia Tonight. In our top story, government expands subsidised diesel control system project. Do tune in to World Today coming up tomorrow at 12.30pm on TV2. And on behalf of RTM, a very happy Mother's Day once again to all amazing mothers in the world. I'm Jessica Lee from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Thank you for watching.